Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com, and I had so much fun making the 3D pattern for the giant bullfrog face that I showed you in the last video that I made another pattern. This one's a jackrabbit. After I had the pattern all designed and, and taped together, I kind of went a little bit nuts putting the colors on here. Um, I figured I could experiment any way I wanted to because if it didn't work out, I can just uh, print up another pattern to make another one. So um, why not go crazy? Um, in order to do this, I used brown paper, colored tissue paper, newsprint in order to get the kind of uh, variation in the agouti coat that seemed really important on a jackrabbit. I used paper towels, acrylic paint, a heavy medium to make some fur patterns, um, but it, you can't really see it when it's done, so that was sort of pointless. I used a glazing medium uh, mixed up with burnt umber uh, just to pull all the colors together. I used soft pastel to bring out the white, and I used fingernail polish on the eyes. Now the only thing that's different about building this pattern and building the pattern for the bullfrog was that before I used crumpled uh, aluminum foil to support the inside of the face. And this time I decided that I was really concerned about dislodging the eyeballs. They're one and a half inch styrofoam balls and I didn't want them dislodged when I pushed the, uh, the aluminum foil inside there. So I went to the garden store and I got some perlite. I actually wanted uh, vermiculite, but I don't think it would make any difference. It's just something that I could pour in there and fill it all up, and it really did help. Um, and it was a, actually it was quite a bit easier to get it in there without distorting the shape of the uh, cardstock that the pattern is printed on. So I'm going to go with that from now on. Now let me show you how uh, the pattern was actually put together. If you'd like to make a jackrabbit like this, you can download the pattern from my website. I'll put a link to it right down below on the, in the description to the video. Um, you do need to print this on cardstock so that it's nice and heavy. Now you do need to cover your pattern pieces with uh, some kind of uh, plastic tape just to keep the wet paper mache from softening the cardstock too much. Last time when I made the giant bullfrog I used wide packing tape which look, worked really well. This time though I went to the shelf liner department in Walmart and I got this stuff. It's by the Peel and Stick Company but it's got a permanent adhesive because it's made for uh, laminating documents and it's so wide, uh, it's 12 inches wide I think, but it's about exactly the same cost as a roll of packing tape. So I'm covering the, the pieces front and back. Uh, it makes it a much stiffer than the packing tape did when you were only using it on one side. Now if you watch the bullfrog video, you know that putting these together is pretty straightforward. You're going to have tabs with numbers and then straight pieces with numbers. You just match them up. Try to put the tabs in the back. Now, you might have some, some spots like right down here at the bottom of the rabbit's ear that really like to pull apart again. We've got really complex curves and we're trying to build them out of very stiff flat paper. So just turn your piece over and uh, tape up that tab at the back and then it'll hold together properly. Now the one thing that you're going to find that you didn't see on the bullfrog pattern are these interior cuts. So you just cut the solid line and then we're going to line up the solid line with the dotted line that's right next to it. You'll need to, to bend things because that's, that's the whole purpose of those interior cuts is to uh, make a nice curve on this piece. There we go. So it'll end up looking like this. And then just go ahead and do all of them on that piece and then you can tape that piece to the rest of your ear or face, whichever one you're working on. Now also, because the rabbit's ear and face are, is all made out of rounded shapes and you're working with flat pieces of paper, um, sometimes you do have to kind of wrestle with it a little bit in order to get the pieces to come together. I've noticed that one thing that's been helping me a lot is using this guy because then I can kind of hold the pieces together with one hand and tear a piece of tape off with the other hand. Now the one thing also on the ears that I don't think you're going to find on the face, although there might be a few spots, where you want to soften up the, the points. Uh, rabbits don't have any points. So you can just kind of push it against the table like that. That really works. Uh, just soften that up so it's not pointy anymore. Now I've got my ears done and I'm getting ready to start on the head. 
The most difficult pieces to do are the little ones right at the beginning. That's the nose and the muzzle. These go together exactly the same way as the as the ear. There's going to be parts that really need to be bent fairly strongly before you start. And look at the uh, illustration on the first page of your pattern. You'll find those marked. The mountain folds are going to be marked in red and the valley folds will be marked in green. Whenever you do a piece that you really have to struggle to get the pieces to fit together, go back and make sure that you tape over the tabs on the back because you don't want to have to do that twice. <laughs> it really helps to uh, kind of uh, tack them on really solid before you put on the next piece because sometimes the piece will just decide to pull apart again and that can be really discouraging. It does take time to cut all the pieces out and tape them together so I'll just speed things up here a little bit. Now when you get to pieces number 24 and 25, you need to stop. Uh, that's where I am right now. It's time to put the eyeballs in. The eyeballs are made with one and a half inch styrofoam balls. You could use wooden balls if you want. Stick them in the inside and make sure that the corners of the eyes are down nicely. Um, they, it, it should look very much like it does here. The eyes will fit in very well. Put a piece of masking tape over the eyeballs to keep them in place. Use your glue gun to put three or four uh, spots of glue all the way around each eyeball as, as far as you can reach. And then after it cools, you can go ahead and finish taping up the rest of the pieces. Now, if you're going to be using something other than vermiculite or perlite to uh, support the inside of your jackrabbit's head, you want to go ahead and put that in now before putting the back on. Okay, I got my back on there. I'm using my funnel here. I think I have almost as much in there as it'll take right now. Okay, I'm just going to tape that up. And I'll clean up my mess and then I can make a cardboard back for this so we have a nice flat back that will be really easy to attach to the wall or to a uh, mounting board. Now I have the ears done and I've got the head done, but I want to put this wire around the edges of the ears before I attach them to the head. The reason I'm going to do this is just so that I can pose the ears any way I want to. And it will also uh, provide a little bit of support so that the heavy paper mache doesn't cause the ear to collapse. You don't need to use armature wire, by the way. Use any wire that is... Uh, reasonably strong but still bendy. I just happen to have some armature wire laying around. I also have some steel tie wire out in the garage and it would work just as well but I'm too lazy to go out and get it. So I'm using this. Okay, I've got my ears on there. I used lots of tape because the connection point between the ear and the head is the weakest part of the sculpture so I want to make sure that's reinforced. I did a little bit of posing with that wire and now the very last thing I need to do before putting the paper mache over my jackrabbit is to cover the entire head with masking tape. That will give the paper mache something to stick to. Now I have all the masking tape on, but there's a couple of things I want to do before adding the paper mache. The one is to add a softer, rounder nose. We know where the nose goes because of the uh, pattern, but it just isn't quite softly rounded enough. So I just put a piece of aluminum foil over there. I'm going to tape it on. And I'm using just a little bit more of the aluminum foil, little uh, ropes of aluminum foil to make nice eyelids. Since I lowered the eyelids a bit, I also added a little bit of padding up here to round it off with the rest of the brow bone. And I added a lip. So now I'm ready to do my paper mache. I'm going to be using brown paper. Now you can use any kind of paper mache you want to on your jackrabbit. You could uh, use paper mache clay. It's the perfect project for that. There's a lot of different options for this guy. As soon as the paper mache was dry on the front half of my jackrabbit, I realized that I had put way too much aluminum foil here in the corners of the eyes. Oh well, <laughs> that's one of those things that happens. And as long as I'm changing things anyway, I'm going to add just a little bit of, I don't know what we're going to call it, poochiness right there. This jawline is just a little bit too sharp. I think I'll add just a wee bit of roundness right there. 
Then I added three or four layers of brown paper using raw flour paste. And then, of course, I uh, colored him the way I showed you at the beginning of the video. You could also make this rabbit using uh, paper mache clay and paint him. That would also be really nice. So that's it for this video. I hope you come visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.